Hi students, welcome to the next one. So the previous video was all about covalent network lattices. So the network there is important, that meaning that the covalent bonds form a, a strong scaffolding that makes them hard. Um, our examples were of course diamond and quartz. Um, high melting points, um, didn't conduct electricity, all those things. So now we're going to do the last covalent substance that we're going to talk about. So we've done covalent molecular, covalent network, and now we're going to do covalent layer lattices. So pretty much only one example of this that we're ever going to talk about, and that's graphite. Um, so if you learn a lot about graphite, it may not be named, but if, if you know, you recognize the properties of graphite, you can recognize a covalent layer lattice. And again, it's an allotrope of carbon, meaning that it's made up of pure carbon, but the carbon is arranged in a different arrangement from, say, the carbon that you would get in diamond. Hence, it's called an allotrope, known as graphite. Now, it's made up of many atoms held strongly together in a two-dimensional layers of covalent bonds. So two-dimensional means that all the covalent bonds are in a plane. Now these planes of covalent bonds are referred to as the layers, hence the layer lattices, um, but the layers are held together by very weak dispersion forces. Um, so you have a layer and another layer and between them very weak forces, but on the planes very strong. And so an analogy I use is perhaps a piece of paper where this would be the layer with the covalent bonds, which is fairly strong, okay. Have another piece of paper with covalent bonds in it, but the pieces of paper can move and freely separate. So similar to like that. It's also like, uh, sometimes use the analogy of pages in a book. Let's have a look at what that's trying to represent. Here's one layer, here's another layer, here's another layer. There's our carbon atoms with covalent bonds between them. Okay, now notice that each carbon now only has three covalent bonds, so that means there's a free electrons, and those free electrons um, go backwards and forwards between the layers, and these dashed lines are supposed to represent the weak forces between the layers. Okay, so if one hand is one layer of covalent bonded uh, carbon atoms, the other hand is the other layer of covalently bonded carbon layers. Between the two layers, we've got electrons going in between, and that's what's holding them together, but only very weakly. And those free electrons give gra graphite one of its characteristic properties as well, which you may be able to guess. So what does graphite look like? Um, hopefully I'll pull some out in the lab and you can have a look at it. It's a shiny, metallic-y looking stuff, but is also quite flaky. Um, you can see that it's flaking off there. Um, and so in its natural state it gets processed into a powder which can be used as a lubricant. Um, it can be added to metals to make them particularly hard um, but also strong. Not hard but more strong. Um, and these things is a big bundle of graphite and that's an electrode used in the smelting processes of uh, certain metals. So what are the properties in terms of its structure? Well, um, when you have a look at it, it's black and it's opaque and it's a solid, it has a metallic sheen. Um, it has a high melting point greater than 3000 degrees. It's a good conductor of electricity, which is uh, a characteristic that the other covalent substances don't have. And it's soft, flaky and slippery to touch. So how do we explain that? Well, it's uh, it's opaque and metallic sheen because of the way it interacts with light and it's due to those delocalized electrons. Remember how we explained our metals have a, a metallic luster because of the delocalized electrons? Well, graphite has delocalized electrons as well, hence the metallic sheen to them. High melting point? Well, the covalent bonds are very strong um, and so you, it's very, it takes a lot of energy to break those covalent bonds. So exactly the same exp explanation we had for the covalent network, diamond and quartz. Good conductor electricity, 
delocalized electrons. Those electrons between the layers can carry a current. Okay, uh, soft flaky, weak dispersion forces. So the, the dispersion forces between the layers are weak, and therefore the layers can slide, and that's why it's used as a lubricant, um, especially in high temperature situations or can be used as a dry lubricant where you don't want any uh, other liquids or hydrocarbons or any other contaminations. So it has some very specialized uses. And let's go through some of those uses because it's the only non-metal found in nature that conducts electricity. Uh, if you pull apart a little pen light battery, it will have a center core of graphite. It's also used in fuel cells. Pencils used to be made with a lot of graphite. Now mostly they're made with um, wax and inks, but uh, old pencils used to have a graphite center in them. Brushes for electric motors. Uh, motors, the spinning part inside a motor sometimes has to be in contact with electricity, and so uh, little graphite cubes are pushed against it, and as it spins it lubricates itself, but it also conducts electricity. If you ever pull apart a uh, electric motor you often find it's covered in a black substance and that's the graphite from the brushes wearing out. High temperature lubricant specialty uses for it um, they make solid crucibles out of graphite so that you can heat metals um, the nozzles on rockets are almost solely made out of graphite because that's the only substance that can keep uh, its shape at such high temperatures. Uh, it's also used in fibres and clothes combined with plastics to make uh, strong materials and you also find it being used in um, rackets, rods, golf clubs, artificial joints and even in car tyres. Now on our OneNote you'll also find a video about a graphite bomb um, which was uh, used a few years ago, it's still in the arsenal of a few countries and basically um, what it is is a bomb that's been packed full of graphite when it blows up it uh, makes a big cloud of graphite and it's used to knock out electrical systems and computer systems um, electronic hubs of your enemy and stuff you, you like if you blow up on a substation all the graphite shorts out the power station and it's almost impossible to clean um, and get rid of. Um, and so the earliest graphite bombs um, were almost as effective as blowing up the power, power substation because you couldn't get the substation working again um, and so they actually had to redefine the bomb so that um, instead of destroying the substation you could actually um, rebuild it. So you think everyone knew everything about graphite um, and they did, however a new substance related to graphene was uh, only recently discovered and it's called graphene and it's actually now replaced diamond as the strongest material um, and it's a, it can be the world's thinnest and strongest material and it <coughs> its discovery was given to these two guys got a Nobel Physics Prize in 2010 for the discovery and basically graphene is an individual layer of graphite um, but people hadn't been able to to make it and isolate it and separate it and uh, these guys discovered that they could make graphene this new substance by taking graphite and putting sticky tape on it and then peeling off the sticky tape and some of the graphite that came off on the sticky tape was actually only one atom thick and that was the rarity the uh, difficult part was to get a layer that's only one atom thick and then this has its own particular properties because the now the electrons that are free are free to move backwards and forwards and along it and so you can do some like people are uh, uh, talking about all the w weird and wonderful uses that it might possibly have. Um, so on our OneNote there's three videos there for you to watch which tell you much more about graphene in much greater detail. <coughs> so uh, here's a couple of questions that uh, you need to be able to do. 
um, in terms of explaining the differences between graphite and say diamond and explain why graphite is used for certain um, uses and you'll be doing those in class and they're the answers there if you want to freeze this um, very quickly you can check out what they say but it's also in the back of your textbook so the next video will be on bonding molds so cheerio